Right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you as usual from, thankfully, a sunny San Diego. And today I'm delighted to be joined from Nashville, Tennessee by Josh Altop. How are you doing, Josh? Man, I'm doing great. Thank you so much for uh, letting me come hang with you. I, I guess I wish I was out there with you right now in that weather, but... <laughs> Yeah, it's kind of nice today, although I was telling you it hasn't been that great this year. But as I as I always say, nobody has any sympathy for you complaining about the weather in San Diego. So I'll <laughs> shut up about that now. <laughs> and Josh is the co-founder of the Sales League and brings uh, over a combined decade of high ticket coaching and B2B sales expertise with his partner, Jake Grant, to turn sales teams into revenue generating powerhouses. He ensures businesses multiply cash flow, cash flow for maximum scalability to direct impactful strategies by equipping sales professionals to conquer objections and dominate their market. And what I find really fascinating, what I wanted to talk to Josh about is that he, when he transitioned from being a music producer into then being yeah. a salesperson, uh, you became a million dollar closer. But that didn't happen just by osmosis. You actually had to do some things and make some shifts in order to become that million dollar close. And that's what I want to talk about today, because, you know, the way that people will always say, oh, you know, you can't go from something like that. You have to be born in sales, and blah, blah, blah. And we all know that's not true. So um, yeah. just talk about, talk, first of all, before you even get into those shifts, talk about what was it like when you first transitioned from being a music producer to being a salesperson? What kind of a, a culture shock was that to you? Yeah, I mean, that's a great question. Uh, when I look at as a going from, you know, making records to breaking records, as I say, right? <laughs> uh, I, I did it for 25 years as a musician. I mean, I still do music uh, sure. here and there. And I, you know, I, I'm thankful that I have some, you know, songs working on my behalf and a catalog and whatnot. But it was a it was a shift. Here's the thing I like to tell people. It wasn't as much as a culture shock as I thought it was going to be. And here's why. When I was in the music space, although I did it for 25 years and I played and I loved it and it was exciting, I actually felt a lot of times out of out of sequence or out of my comfort zone because a lot of musicians and, and creatives um, probably just have higher empathy than I have and maybe a higher emotional intelligence than I have. And for me, I, you know, I love to work and I love to grind. And, you know, I'd be in a, a writing room and people, they want to come in and talk and sit for and talk <laughs> for an hour, talk for two hours. And, and then we'll figure out what we're going to write. I'm like, the second that you're here, we're on the clock. Let's go. Yeah. Right. So when I got into the business marketplace and, and through sales, I actually felt at home. Mm. I felt very at home because I jumped into a high ticket kind of coaching online space. And I love that because it was very fast paced, sink or swim. Let's go for it. And I did. You're right. I, I had zero degrees. I had no plaques on my wall. I had nothing cool from click funnels. I had no, you know, hundred and a billion questions to ask people. I didn't have any of that. No certifications. All I had was belief and conviction in the product and the offer that I was selling and that if it could help one person, then why couldn't it help every person? And so I leveraged that. I never, I went, you know, accept, accepted the job on a, a, on a Thursday, Monday, canceled all my rights, reported. And I think I closed like 30 grand or something in my first week. Mm -hmm. And it was like going from never taking a sales call. How is that possible? The only attribution I have is really that it was just a pure belief and conviction that yeah. it was like, well, well, why not me? Why do you have to be born into something? Why can't I learn this the same way anyone else could learn it? But, so culture shock, it wasn't that bad. Yeah. But the other the thing that you mentioned there that I think is very critical, it's critical for people, is that that you had a conviction that, that what you were going to sell mattered, that it was going to help people, it was going to solve whatever problem it was going to solve. But you had a real belief and passion for that product or service. And I think that is one of the things that you can, you can tell separates immediately, you know, uh, successful salespeople for those from those who aren't, because a lot of people either don't believe or haven't really bought into or whatever. And it comes across very quickly to the person on the other side if you don't really believe and are not passionate about your product. Mm -hmm. Think about when you're about to go on vacation. Think about the last time you went on vacation. You're getting ready and you, your friends tell you, they know, say, hey, I'm going to I'm going to go to Vegas or something. Mm -hmm. Not that I go to Vegas, but let's just say you're going to go to Vegas and 
you're going to go and, and have a good time. And what someone, you know, you know, had just gone and they're like, oh, you know, you definitely want to try that out. Try out that restaurant. Well, you might try out that restaurant. It might be a good recommendation. But if someone comes to you and says, I know how much you love breakfast. Mm. And I promise you, when you get there, the number one thing that you have got to do is you've got to have breakfast at the Wynn Hotel's breakfast buffet. I know all these buffets in Vegas talk about this and they talk about that, but I promise you, you'll never have another breakfast experience like you will have when you go eat at the Wynn. How more likely are you to invest your dollars, yeah. your time, and your energy into going to the win, paying that absurd price for that breakfast because of the way that it was communicated, right? Yeah. I always say this, belief is caught, not taught, right? Mm -hmm. You know, someone taught me that a long time ago. And 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 I love that because it gives me a power and, and it empowers me that says, okay, where I'm working at right now, is it just a job? Or is it actually something that I actually believe in? You know, even mm -hmm. if it was just... Say you're selling uh, 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 steel, right? You know, or some type of construction thing. And you're like, well, do I really love this? Is it just a job? And it's like, why can't you be just as passionate about that offer as you were, you know, a fitness offer or yeah. a financial offer? Why can't we have people who are in the right seats on the right bus, passionate about what they're doing and, and excited about the impact that they have for whatever that is? Mm -hmm. And I mean, but part of it is, again, I mean, so you were able to you were able to come in and, and, and start uh, having results immediately or generating yeah. results immediately. And part of it is because of the, you know, the passion and, and the that you were bringing to it. But also, I, I think part of it too, and correct me if I'm wrong, is that you you are proud to be a salesperson and proud of what you were doing, uh, what you are doing. And too many people have bought into this negative stereotypes and perceptions of popular culture about salespeople, so they almost feel apologetic. I worked at one time with. I was running a, sale, a global sales consultancy and the amount of times we worked with companies and they said, they said, oh yeah, yeah, you know, we don't call our salespeople salespeople. We call them whatever, some stupid made up. And I said, that's yeah. fine. We can, we can certainly call them that, but I'll just give you a tip. Their prospect knows they're a salesperson. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have a client right now that they don't call them salespeople. Mm -hmm. And finally I went to, to, to the C-suite team and I said, Hey, listen, I understand what you guys think is happening here. They're, mm -hmm. They have these other responsibilities and they do this over here. But but I'm letting you know, if they don't produce results, meaning that they don't sell this product or yeah. good or service, are you going to keep them in that position? No, you're not. So therefore, maybe you don't want to call them like a true, true salesperson. Maybe they're an account you know, executive, right. Mm -hmm. Or, uh, uh, you know, account manager, meaning that they are making sure that the LTV is increased by right. maintaining current clients mm -hmm. and increasing that. Additionally, they are, you know, making sure that new revenue is coming in. It's not as heavy on the front right. end, but no matter how you slice it, if that person does not yield you a result, i.e. bringing money into the business, well, we don't have a business. So therefore that person's utility now becomes null and void. So you might as well just go ahead and call them a salesperson and understand that they should operate under what that means. I think the bigger problem, and this is kind of my personal message, hopefully this isn't too much of a tangent for you, but no. my personal conviction or vendetta that I'm on, maybe mission, I don't know what the word is, campaign, let's go with campaign. My personal campaign right now is to redefine what it means to be a sales professional. Mm -hmm. I don't know why the hell anybody would be sad about being a sales professional. Well, oh, I wait, maybe I do, because somewhere along the line, you've taken uh, the a counterfeit, you've yep. accepted a counterfeit to what it means to be sales. Because for us, when we teach sales, you know, people come to us for two reasons, right? They're either coming to us because they are a sales professional, uh, some degree, that could be they are full time sales, they're a small to medium sized business owner where they're still doing sales, um, or, or their sales manager, something like that. They come and they train with us in the sales league, right? Almost like a, a fitness trainer, but they're coming right. for sales. They train six times a month. It's like super low cost. It's nothing per month. It's a, a subscription and they crush it. Or businesses come to us and they say, hey, I need help actually scaling. I want a cash flow or cash out in my business. Therefore, I need my sales systems to be an asset and we need to put some kerosene on this fire. No matter how you slice it, when we work with these people, I say, 
sales is just solving problems. Yep. The great Lou Holtz said that. He said, I never helped anybody helped, I never sold anything to anybody. I just helped them buy by right. solving their problems. Yep. So so if we could redefine what sales is, you would be surprised how much just the definition in your own mind as a sales pro would actually increase your conversion rate. Yeah, no, I I hundred percent agree with you. We 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 uh, we agree with you here. We uh, we we use the term that uh, salespeople are are uh, wealth creators and peace producers because if you mm. think about it, when people are you know when salespeople are selling and people are buying and there's a, a and there's a mutual exchange of value and everybody's happy with what they're getting. Um, there's no room for conflict, right? So, uh, and as you said, the sales pe person is in that role of a problem solver as a helper. It's an it's a noble, it's a noble role, and I think exactly what you're talking about. We have to get people to understand that rather than go, "Ooh, I don't want to be seen as that sleazy salesperson." You're going, "What sleazy salesperson? You mean that one that's in, in being portrayed in popular culture? What about all of the great salespeople who've who've helped?" people be successful. Where, where have you seen in, in your dealings? I'm genuinely curious now. Now I'm like intrigued. Mm -hmm. Where have you seen um, the light bulb moment happen for sales professionals? Is it, is it a way of training? Is it a, is it a book? Is it just a constant, you know, uh, being in front of them and, and, and talking that where have you seen that? Yeah, no, I, I agree. I think it's a it it I believe it's a it's a mindset thing. That's the first place you gotta you gotta start with. The attitude that you came into sales with is is the attitude that most salespeople just need to adopt. They need to sort of be proud of what they're about to do and believe in what they're about to do, what what they're selling and be passionate about it. But I think that it it all begins with mindset because let's face it, if you go into anything with a diminished mindset or perception of yourself, you're not going to be successful. And I think that's the thing is, and the thing, I think the other secret too, Josh is like, uh, the person on the, the person on the receiving end, the buyer, the prospect, the buying committee, whoever they are at the end of the day, they want an expert. They want somebody who's passionate. They actually want that. They're expecting the opposite, but that's what they want. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. I mean, I don't think people are like, Oh, I don't, you know, what was that saying? People are like, people don't want to be sold, but they like buying or yeah, you know, whatever. And I'm just yeah. like, I don't think about any of those things. Mm -hmm. Here's what I think about. You obviously took time out of your calendar to book a call. Or if I'm good enough and, you know, I cold call you or something like that. Not that I'm advocating for that. I'm just saying, let's say that happens and I get you to stay on the phone that somehow you're interested and you're intrigued, especially when you see inbound, right? With yep. this whole marketing way that people are doing sales and if you're gonna pick up a phone pick up a zoom allow me to come and meet you in person then obviously there's something that you are looking to solve or you know you're either running from something or running towards something mm -hmm. right yeah well let's just figure out what that is if it's us phenomenal if it's not no worries we'll move on we'll, we'll, we'll make sure you're pointing in the right direction but i just think if we could just take that approach honestly you know what's funny? Me and my business partners say this all the time. This approach in sales has actually made us better husbands and better fathers. Mm. Because now instead of saying, no, it's it's my way or, hey, you do that. It's more or less like, okay, wife, you're upset about this thing or whatever. Okay. <laughs> and, and you're mad or sad or I did something. Sure, we can argue about it if you want to. I mean, who doesn't love a good argument? But <laughs> Or I could talk to you and I can listen and understand why do you feel this way? Mm -hmm. What about is what's going on uh, upset you? How did I cross the line? How did we, um, how are we out of alignment on this topic or on this situation? And now instead of me trying to prove why I'm right about us being out of alignment, what if I said, well, how can we get back in alignment? Mm -hmm. What if my focus was alignment, unity, as opposed to, it's, it's like the saying, do, do you, are you an adversary or are you an advocate on your sales consults? Yeah. Yeah. It's very simple. If no, you're an I, adversary, I, you're going to be like this all day long. Yeah. But if you're an advocate, it means you will say and do what needs to be said. That's best for the prospect, not for yourself, not for your yeah. pocketbook, but best for the prospect. Yeah. Cause I, I think sometimes people come into it too worried about, 
uh, you know, the, the landmines, the objections, the things that might come up. And they're so, it's almost like coming in with that tension you're waiting for. Oh, he's mentioned that. And now you're suddenly defensive. And that's when you get the adversarial thing um, cropping up. But what you just outlined there is if you approach it with that, with that confidence, the confidence to want to understand, right? Yeah. And also, it's good to come into it knowing that, yes, the, the prospect, the person you're talking to, may be a little bit defensive. Their 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 guard may be up a little bit because maybe they've had terrible experiences with other salespeople. Now you have the opportunity to show them what a real real salesperson can do. Yeah, yeah, and then then it allows you to. It's almost like they get to see what a real salesperson can do is the byproduct of their world or their life or the impact that they're looking for, the solution being mm -hmm. solved. That's first and foremost. And then in turn, you know, it's my favorite is not when a prospect says, oh, wow, you're good at this. Right. Honestly, the way I'm wired, I'm like, of course I am. <laughs> like, <laughs> If I wasn't, I shouldn't be doing this. Right. Not because it's not an yeah. arrogant statement. It's like, yeah. why would I not want to be the best that I can be to help you? Mm -hmm. How how unethical of me to not be the best version of me? Because that's not going to help you. What I love when they say is thank you. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for understanding me and helping me see or showing me that it's possible or that uh, that that there is a solution. That's what I love the most mm -hmm. because now it's not about my skill and my talent. It's about my willingness to serve. It's about my willingness mm -hmm. to hear, to understand, to heck, man, put myself, you know, not first. Right. Which as humans, it's hard not to put yourself mm -hmm. first. So. And, and, and what you outlined there, by the way, is it's interesting that there's somebody told me recently that there was some research done after COVID or whatever. And uh, and the result, you know, among among employees uh, and the thing that came out that it was very simple. People just wanted to be seen, heard and understood, seen, heard and understood. Simple as that. It's like there was nothing like dramatic or anything that came out of it. It's just literally what you just outlined there is they want you to see them. They want you to hear what they're saying and then they want you to understand them and their situation. And if you can do that, then either they'll turn into, you know, they'll turn into a customer or they even if, if they're not the right fit, they will certainly walk away with a positive impression of you. And who knows, maybe recommend you to someone else. Yeah. And the the hard part is there for that to work. What you just yep. said, which I am I love, not that I want us to sound like an echo chamber, but <laughs> well, I, I am in alignment with you on that. Mm -hmm. It means that I have to. What we call you, you got to like swallow that commission breath. Yep. Right. You got to make sure that you're swallowing your pride and you're operating from abundance versus scarcity. Mm -hmm. When we get like, oh, I need that sale. I need that sale ah, because our pipeline's not stacked. We're not doing our due diligence. We're not nurturing people. We're not keeping things going. It's like that was my one and only deal this week. Mm -hmm. I love the urgency as if that's your one and only deal. But by God, please don't actually let that be your one and only deal. <laughs> because then what happens is now you have a filter and it is affecting how you serve because all you're trying to do is close, 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 as opposed to serve. Mm -hmm. I promise you when you serve, that byproduct will be that you will have more money in your bank account than you can imagine. Yeah, absolutely. So what was one of, what was one of the things that maybe surprised you when you got into sales? Maybe surprised you positively, like how much this was a, great fit for you and maybe something that you didn't even anticipate i didn't realize how similar sales was to everything i had been doing my whole life mm -hmm. so when i want to get hired as the producer i'm trying to persuade that artist to hire me that my work's the best or that this yep. or that the body of work that i had done before was valuable enough to show them i can help them and, and do that or heck when you're recording a vocal and you're trying to help that artist say like, no, 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 you've got another take in you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You're, you're yeah. pushing them. You're very much an advocate, a champion for them to say, no, I, I think I, I like what you're doing, but let, let's take that one more time. All right. Okay. Now, now when you get into 50 takes and then yeah. you're sitting there for hours and that, that artist is like, Oh God. So you're going there from producing a record, but at the end of the day, you're still just helping somebody solve a problem. They have mm -hmm. a desire to get this message out in the form of a song prospect has a desire to solve problem X, Y, and Z for whatever that is, right? You know, they 
need a new cloud server. They uh, need a new coaching offer. They mm. need help with their marketing, something. And I just realized my favorite thing was like, oh, I just went from producing people in this lane to helping produce people over in this lane. Right. And and I, I actually love the synergy that was there because it made me kind of feel at home and it made me feel like all that I had done and worked for and acquired was not for nothing. Mm. It actually served a purpose and, and, and facilitated an opportunity. Yeah, no, I, I, I think that's fantastic. And, and like the last piece, I think, is just what you outlined there is, though, it's also the the empathy, the understanding where the other person is and, and like trying to uncover where they want to get to and being being happy that you can help on that journey. Uh, and, and I think that's kind of infectious. And I always think the one thing about empathy I was trying to emphasize is empathy doesn't mean agreeing with somebody all the time. It means yeah. understanding them or whatever. It can mean pushing them still. You can be empathetic. And as you said, you can be so, yeah, I understand where you're trying to get to understand you, the person is tired. They're probably frustrated, but they haven't delivered the best take yet. I've got to help them get there. Yeah, to totally agree. Totally agree. Yeah. Well, listen, Josh, it's been fantastic. All of Josh's information is going to be below this video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and what you do. Yeah, uh, me and my business partner, Jake Grant, um, we run a company called The Sales League. Our number one goal is to help businesses cash flow or cash out. Basically meaning we want to give that business everything that it needs. We don't want them dependent upon us or an agency or anybody. We want them to say, hey, if you want, you can have your own internal sales systems team and process. We are going to install that into your business. We're going to show you how to run it and walk alongside with you as you grow and help you grow in those manners. So we'll do that by educating, empowering, and equipping their, their team and their system. We love it. We're passionate about it. Uh, our number one goal is that not one, that every sales pro that works for us makes a bare minimum. And not just for us. I mean, that's in our, our ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Every sales pro would make a bare minimum of $10,000 a month. Then if we can get them to 12 to 15, then we can eventually get them to that 20K mark. If they're at 20K mark, it now allows their thinking to open up and say, okay, now how can I start investing into other mm -hmm. mediums so that they can learn how to acquire passive income? Every sales pro that is in our system, we want them to have passive income so that they can leave an actual legacy for all of their hard work and not just boom, 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 acquire, spend, acquire, spend, mm -hmm. but acquire, invest and build yeah. something for later. Yeah, that's that. Well, that's a fantastic mission. And again, it also helps if you got that passive income. It helps you with that uh, desperate to close thing as well, doesn't it? Like hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. Look, so I would encourage you to go check out the sales league and the work that Josh and his partner Jake are doing. Uh, as I said, everything will be below this video. So thank you for watching. Thanks again, Josh. And thank you for I'll having see me. You all again soon.